Hello and welcome to another painting recap video, this time for February 2021. Now this is going to be shorter than the previous video, partly because I don't have to introduce the format, again stolen, but also because I actually didn't have enough paint for about half of this month. I had to put an order to Games Workshop, so I didn't get anything painted for the first two weeks. So what you're going to see in this video is two weeks worth of painting, but I actually got a fair bit done, I think, including one standout miniature that I said last time my non-metallic metal dwarf. As stated last month, the standout model for this month for me that I put most of my attention into was this dwarf, which came free. Originally it was from the Battle for Skull Pass box, but I got it free in White Dwarf several years ago. And this was my first attempt at doing metals without using metallic paints. So for those of you who haven't seen this technique before, instead of using metallic paints which have tiny flecks of metal in to make them look sparkly and like a metal, the idea is that you use for silvers, greys and blacks and whites, and for golds use oranges and yellows and whites and I think this is fine. For a first attempt, I'm pretty happy with it. The silvers, I think, came out better than the gold. The gold I did in one sitting on the last day of the month because I was rushing to get this finish in time, and I'm still not quite happy with it. I don't think there's quite enough contrast. Equally, I don't think the geometry was particularly forgiving. The silvers were pretty straightforwardly just layered up from a mid-tone going up to the extreme white and the highlight, trying to maximize the contrast, and then going down to basically pure black, whilst the gold Golds were a kind of orangey yellow with some Mournfan brown chucked in there, then shaded down and then taken up to a highlight via Flash Gets Yellow and Skull White, then shaded with Right Clan Flesh to basically kind of burnish it a little bit, which works okay. I think I'd like to try a couple more versions of this technique before I could say that I'm actually happy with it. Also, for those of you who might not realise, this model is really small. Like. It's really quite tiny, a lot smaller than the model I did last month. So I suppose when you actually view it in context, it's, it's pretty good. It's quite possibly the most effort anyone has ever put into a Battle for Skull Pass model. And with that, these two models are now reunited. I actually did the Goblin as the first non-Tyranid that got me back into the hobby. I'd been painting Tyranids for a while and I had this model laying around and I thought, yeah, why not? Let's put some effort into this. So it's quite nice to see them both completed and next to each other. Also this month I finished up another looter. I actually half painted this by the time I made the last video, but he wasn't ready to go in the video. I've also based up the other one, which you may have noticed I didn't do last time, and that was because I'd already run out of the basing paint. Another delay that happened. I tried to do something completely different for each of their shirts, and this guy I just kind of went a bit nuts. I googled terrible Hawaiian shirt, and I think this kind of 90s inspired design was perfect. The cannons are quite interesting though. The cannons were originally a kind of basic metal. I think that was actually how the first looter was shown last time. And what I did was weather them up, basically by stippling a kind of brassy color over it, and then going over it with browns, oranges, and then lastly, a little bit of Baharoth blue, the light blue, with the idea it being that these cannons were salvaged from shipwrecks. So they look like they've been in the ocean for a while. One of them actually has some Armageddon texture underneath, so it looks like it's got sand, and then that was gone over with Agrax. When the unit's completed, and there's five of them, all with these similar looking cannons, I think they're gonna look pretty good. And then lastly for this month, I did say there wasn't that much, these Orc Boys. Again, exactly the same steps as last time, basic use of contrast paint, and then a couple more details picked out in layers. Two shirts in this one, including one that was a bunch of flamingos, which might be one of my favorites yet. Looking ahead to next month, the original plan for the standout model was gonna be this, a flyrant, flying hive tyrant. Um, Never done anything like this before, never done anything quite this big, and I was also going to magnetize it so that you can sort of use various different options. However, something happened on stream that um, kind of meant that that isn't going to happen. I think, it, yeah, may maybe we should think about switching over actually. It's good and point. his name is John Cena! <laughs> Simon, look out for the incoming helicopter at a ta <gasps> Well, uh, guys and gals and non-binary pals, I think, uh, I think we know where that £100 donation is going. For, for people who don't understand the scale of this thing, he's so big! He's so big! <laughs> Oh my god, I'm actually going to have to do it. I said I would. What I'm probably going to do is this month I'm going to assemble the Hive Tyrant, but I think I'm going to make the Demacaron 
the big project because this way it's teaching me several new things. The whole thing with the dwarf this month was it was the first time I'd done non-metallic metals uh, with the marine previously. It was the first time I'd sort of in a very long time that I'd really concentrated on one model. For the Demacaron it's going to be the first time I've made anything from Forge World other than one turret for my Razorback and it's also going to be the first time that I'll be using an airbrush because it's such a big model uh, it's a perfect opportunity to learn how to use one. So a couple of new things, and they're all things which I can also use uh, and apply to the Flying Hive Tyrant because that's also going to need an airbrush, I'm also going to have to probably pin some bits of it and then obviously do some magnetization. So in a way we've got two standout models next month. I'm also hoping to finish off all of the Orc boys. Uh, there's uh, about half a squad left and with those done I can sort of move my attention for the bulk painting over to the Grots and then the Knobs. And then the next special unit in the army that I'm going to focus on is the bikers which I've just today bought some UV resin and I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of new techniques so that might be a standout model it depends basically if I get impatient next month might be a bumper one but don't get your hopes up <laughs> thank you for watching and indulging my man-child hobby and also allowing me to write off all of this as a business expense